the Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii and seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. And then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, reform us into the forgiving body of Christ for our sake and for the sake of the world you so love. Amen. Okay. We're going to start with a calculator, and we're going to end with a song. And it's up to the Spirit to get us from point A to B. So we're going to look at this parable that Jesus taught about forgiveness and wrap our heads around it using a modern currency. So I can't believe I'm doing this, but if you have a smartphone with a calculator, please take it out now. And this, I'm living into my fear that people are looking at their phones while I'm preaching anyhow. So now I at least can believe that it's um, because you're following my instructions. So if you don't, don't worry, but you're going to have to trust your brothers and sisters to be giving the right calculations. Um, So first of all, we're going to look at how much money this slave owed the king. 10,000 talents. Now we need to know that a talent was worth 6,000 denarii. Because we need to transfer to like terms, because later we're going to find out that this slave was owed 100 denarii. So let's get talents into denarii. 10,000 talents times 6,000 denarii. Can someone do 10,000 times 6,000 for me? 60 what? Thank you, 60 million? Okay, 60 million. So now we have 60 million denarii that he owed the king and 100 denarii that he was owed. Okay, his debt to the king was very, very big. How much he was owed by his uh, counterpart? Not so much. Okay, but we still, denarii, what does that mean? A denarii, denarius, one single denarius, was worth a day's wage in biblical times. So let's take 
a day's wage in our time. The minimum wage is $15.50 an hour. Let's multiply that by eight hours. Now, likely they worked longer in those days, but let's just use eight hours. So somebody do $15.50 times eight hours. What is it? $124? Okay, $124. All right. So let's multiply now 60 million times 124. <laughs> Too big. We don't have the luxury of not doing this math, Nick. 7.44 billion. 7.44 billion dollars, and then what is 100 denarii times 124? 12,400? Thank you. Okay, so let's get this in perspective. $744 billion he owes to the king. The king wants to settle accounts. He said, just give me some time to pull it together. And the king said, how about instead of time to pay me back, I erase your debt. Wow. It was even more than he asked. And then he goes right around. And his fellow slave owes him $12,400. And his fellow slave uses the same language to him and says, just give me some time to put it together. Instead of responding with the grace and the mercy of the king, the way the king responded to him, he doesn't even say, okay, I'll give you some time. He says, how about you go to prison now? Impacting his whole family, his whole world. So what is Jesus saying to us? The debt we owe to God is enormous. In the billions. And God forgives our debt. The debt we owe to others is so small. The debt others owe to us is so small, yet we tend to hang on to it. And then Jesus says, You're, you have a choice the way this is going to play out. It can play out with mercy and forgiveness, that you respond with the mercy and the forgiveness that has shown you, or you can choose a world where every last debt has to be paid. That's the calculator, right? That's the calculator approach to life. There's also a song approach to life. And turns out we even have a choice about what song we'll sing. And that's where it's really interesting to know the backstory of this 77 times. We have to go all the way back to, oh, thanks, that's the song. Thanks for that song, Guy. Um, we have to go all the way back to Genesis. Remember Cain and Abel? Remember Cain was the brother who killed Abel? And when God was punishing Cain, cursing him to wander the earth, Cain pleaded and said, I will be destroyed if you send me out to wander. And God said, I'm going to mark you. And if anybody kills you, they will be avenged seven times. So God is promising to get back at anybody who kills Cain. Well, go down some generations. Lamech. Have you ever heard of Lamech? This is not a biblical character we hear of often. Some of you have heard. But Lamech is in chapter 4 of Genesis. He is the great, 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 four greats, grandson of Cain. Lamech was wounded and killed a person in re response, in vengeance. And he comes back, and we're told in Genesis, he literally sings about it to his wives. 
he comes back and he sings, I have killed a man for wounding me. Truly, Lamech is avenged 77-fold. Lamech celebrated his success, not just in repaying a wound for a wound, an eye for an eye, but he raised the stakes. He killed a person in response for wounding him. He celebrates that. It's not just sevenfold, it's 77-fold. Lamech is saying, I'm even going to get back more than God promised to get back to my great, 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 great grandfather. Lamech's song in our day sounds something like, payback is sweet. That's the old song, payback is sweet. And it's the calculator song. Jesus came to teach us a new song. And that's what he does with 77 times, right? Peter says, how much should I forgive? Seven times? And Jesus says, not seven, 77 times you should forgive. And Jesus is echoing all the way back to Genesis, to Lamech's song, and saying it's time for us to teach, to sing a different song. Not of revenge, not of retaliation, not of payback is sweet, but of forgiveness. There's a new song, the song of forgiveness. Now, whenever we talk about forgiveness, we have to just start with definitions. What does it mean to forgive? So I went to... Uh, Mayo Clinic. It's a health website, right? Because now even doctors and scientists are telling us that forgiveness is good for our health. Forgiveness is a decision to let go of resentment and thoughts of revenge. It's a choice. It's a decision to let go of resentment and thoughts of revenge. The act that hurt or offended you might always remain a part of your life, but forgiveness can lessen its grip on you and help you focus on other more positive parts of your life. Forgiveness can even lead to feelings of understanding, empathy, and compassion for the one who hurt you. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you deny the other person's responsibility for hurting you, and it doesn't minimize or justify the wrong. You can forgive the person without excusing the act. Forgiveness brings a kind of peace that helps you go on with life. The choice to let go of resentment. I'm tempted, and often what we do in church when we talk about forgiveness is we pull out a real dramatic story. And there are many. And we do believe in the possibility of dramatic forgiveness. But we bring out the story of a woman who is able to forgive her son's murderer. Or we bring out a story of a Holocaust survivor who was able to forgive his Nazi captors. Or we bring out the story of an adult child who was able to forgive her abusive parents. We do know that the Holy Spirit can make those gifts of forgiveness possible in our lives. But if we think only that forgiveness has to do with those extreme situations, we forget about our need daily to forgive and to be forgiven. So um, I started taking this really close to home. I feel blessed at this time in my life not to have any major issues of forgiveness, but Paul's really controlling with the thermostat in my house. <laughs> and um, seems not to honor my climate preferences. Now, Paul's not here, if you're looking around. He's in Reno with his parents. Um, but he may now need to forgive me for using him as an example in my sermon. The uh, spiritual writer Henry Nouwen says, 
Forgiveness is the name of love practiced among people who love poorly. The hard truth is that all people love poorly. We need to forgive and be forgiven every day, every hour increasingly. That is the great work of love among the fellowship of the weak that is the human family. If you're looking for a good resource for how to forgive, there's a book, Forgive for Good by Fred Luskin. It's a secular book. He's the founder of the Stanford University Forgiveness Project, and he has steps to forgiveness. But one thing he talks about is how we can become forgiving people. And the best way to do that is to exercise our forgiveness muscles in daily life in small ways, the way we would exercise our physical muscles at the gym. So what, it will not take long, what in your daily life will allow you today or tomorrow or this week to exercise your forgiveness muscle? For me, it's going to be um, Paul's really careful monitoring of the temperature in our house rather than um, saying, why is it that you always have to do this? What is this need for you to control the temperature? It can be, I forgive you for having different temperature needs than me. It sounds simple, it's even laughable, but that's what forgiveness looks like on the ground. Jesus rose from the dead with a word on his lips and the spirit to pass on to us, and that was peace. Peace be with you. It means you're forgiven. Your debts are forgiven. And then he breathed into that small community of disciples his spirit so that they could go on with this work of forgiveness, releasing the debts of others. We started with a calculator, and we're going to end with a song. The song of forgiveness, the song of peace, the song of Christians that goodness is stronger than evil. So as you're able, please stand and we'll sing our hymn of the day, Goodness is Stronger Than Evil.